Hey guys, Najim Lee here. So I am going to just wait a couple minutes just to get people in here. I uh, hope you guys are having an awesome day. Uh, it's beautiful outside and I'm enjoying it. I'm loving the lighting here. So um, as you see from the topic, I'm going to be talking about what it means to have sickle cell. And um, if you don't know, already uh, June 19th, I think it is, um, is Sickle Cell Awareness Day. So, hey John, how you doing? <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, June 19th is going to be uh, Sickle Cell Day. And usually um, throughout the country, uh, United States, and there are other places across the world, um, usually do like a, uh, you know, different events and different things like that. Hi. Wow, you're joining me. How you doing? So I'm going to talk about uh, sickle cell today and stuff. So thank you so much for, for joining. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my specs. So, um, okay, so it's alive. Yay! Um, I'm waiting for a couple more people. Hopefully they'll join. If not, I'm just going to talk away. Um, anyways, so, uh, yeah, so this month, um, that particular day is, is very important. A lot of people do get together and really um, bring awareness to whatever community that they're in regarding sickle cell and also um, you know sometimes they have barbecues sometimes they have a whole bunch of different events and activities and things of that nature um, so yeah June 19th is supposed to be this year I've seen like the 17th 18th and 19th so if it's all three days, then, you know, that's what it is. So, yeah. Welcome, Sonia. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so, I just wanted to... Hey! Hope you're feeling better. <laughs> uh, so, I just wanted to pop on onto Facebook real quickly because of Sickle Cell Day that's coming up. And um, thank you for the love. And also, just talk really quickly from my perspective of what it means to be or to not to be but to have sickle cell what it means to have sickle cell and a lot of people don't know what sickle cell is so I'm gonna quickly do a reference of what sickle cell is sickle cell is a, um, a, a disease okay of the blood Yay, I'm going to explain what it is. <laughs> um, sickle cell is a disease of the blood, basically. All right, so we both have blood running through our bodies. We have red blood cells that help make up the blood with white blood cells, right? Our red blood cells, which carry oxygen throughout the blood, is what's affected. So we have a lack of oxygen flowing through the body. And so with that, our cells, you know, everyone's cells usually is like a circle, a full circle. Within a sickler's body, you have a mix up, mix up of, of whole cells and quarter moon cells. So if you know, like, you've ever seen the moon or bananas, the shape of the bananas. So that's a whole lot of bananas like that running through our veins, okay? And a lot of times it gets cluttered um, like a traffic jam within our blood, within our veins. And so our blood is not holding oxygen very well. And because of that lack of oxygen thrown through the body, it is very hard to, um, you know, it creates pain. It creates all kinds of different things and issues throughout the body, especially hard time with the breathing, hard time with the heart. Um, and thank you so much. This is awesome. And um, it, it, it really, really um, can 
can stop a lot of things happening for a person in their life. Uh, a lot of people go into the hospital a lot, including myself, for what we call a pain crisis. A pain crisis is very severe. It's worse than giving birth to a child, is how it's usually described. And, um, and so with that, um, it really, really is so important to take care of your body and take care of your mind, take care of your surrounding that you are in. Um, everything is really, really important because our body is like very, very sensitive um, in carrying that type of disease. So it affects different organs. Every sickler has a particular issue. For me, it's my my lungs and my heart. Um, for other people, it could be their kidney, could be their liver. Um, it could be a whole different thing. Some people, it's their hip. A, a lot of sicklers get their hip replaced. Uh, and also, too, our teeth. It affects our teeth because of the so many crises that happen, especially in my case, uh, in my jawline all the way down through my neck or up to the top of my head. If I get a crisis in there, it affects all these different organs right here, my eyes, you know, um, my jaw. My jaw is a little bit sl slanted a little bit because of so many pain crises that happen in these areas. So. Um, sickle cell is a a very long-term disease. It's a chronic disease. It's a chronic illness, and there is no real cure out there right now that can, you know, really take away the whole thing for everybody. It's not really out there like that. They're doing a lot of experiments. There are some cases that are, you know, some people are being Re being relieved of it. Um, I know some cases as well that uh, they try different experiments, relieve it, and it's come back. Um, so there's a whole lot of trials and errors and, and all types of experiment going on to really see if they can find a, a really good cure that's going to really work on everybody. Um, so that's what's going on with a quick update in a roundabout way of what sickle cell is. And so I wanted to talk from a perspective because I live with sickle cell and, um, and what it means to have sickle cell. And to me, what it means to have sickle cell is it's a gift, okay? I don't look at it like something really bad or evil or how could God condemn me with this um, uh, I don't look at it in that way when I was younger I really didn't understand it until I was on my own because my parents was always taking care of me that I really didn't have a time to really think about it you know if I'm in pain oh mom I'm in pain and she handles it you know um, or my dad you know I'm not feeling good today they handled it I, I didn't really have to take do anything when I was younger but the moment that I was in college and I was on my own it was a different story and I really didn't have a grip on how to take care of myself or how to do things for myself I was really like lost and I did a lot of blaming at that time and Oh, thank you, sweetie. Uh, a lot, I did a lot of blaming in the beginning. I think I was like 18, 19 at the time. I was really, really upset and just like everybody else can go do and, you know, work and do such great things. And I'm stuck here in bed or I'm stuck here in the hospital or, you know, I, I, I don't have the energy to go do what they're doing. And at some point I was just like, stop <laughs> you're really putting yourself down a, a, a hard path here what do you mean you can't do who said you can't do you know why are you telling yourself you can't do you know what makes you think you can't do um, and the more I grew up and the more I started to 
really understand myself and learn about myself, then I started to get comfortable with, okay, I can do things. I may can do it a different way. I may have to take a little bit more breaks than usual. Um, and that's okay. But the whole point is I can do it. So yeah, I started doing stuff. I started, I was told I couldn't swim. Please, I swam, right? Uh, I'll just make sure the weather is a lot hotter than usual. Like today's a perfect day. It's in the 90s. I will go swim. Um, another thing would be like uh, going on rides at like Six Flags, like I wouldn't do. I did. I went on free fall, you know. And yes, it deals with the oxygen levels or whatever because you're so high up that I did it, right? And then I was like, if I'm feeling something, take my medicine. Um, another thing that, and, and just just giving you examples, um, I was told that I couldn't have kids. I was really rebellious right here. I was like, no, I've always had a vision that I will have a child. And I've had doctors tell me, no, you're not. No, you shouldn't. But I did. Um, I had one, okay? And I was ha I'm happy for my one. Um, I just, like, did a lot of prayer, and I did a lot of really looking at myself and saying, okay, my mind is a lot stronger. If I can develop my mind, my mind will help to develop my body. I still have, woohoo, yes! <laughs> you know? Um, and once I started to develop my mind, like nothing nothing stopped me so I did a lot of traveling uh, another thing they'll tell you oh my gosh flying is really bad for you well I do like a week ahead of if I'm gonna fly I prep myself I drink I drink a lot more I take in a lot more electrolytes I take in um, a lot more food I take in a lot more into my body I go in and do a lot more rest. I'll go to bed a lot more earlier. And I just do things to prep myself. So then the week I'm going to fly, that day I'm flying, I'm good. Sometimes I'll take a muscle relaxer. Sometimes. I'll, it depends how, how long I'm flying for. If it's like under four hours, then I don't need it. Um, if it's over four hours, then I'll do a muscle relaxer. Right? And... That just helps where my body's not as tense. And, um, hi, Chabela. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Um, and so I, I do these things and I just prep myself. And I tell my mind, um, everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be okay. And, and then I just go for it. And I just go for it. You know, it doesn't matter if you're if you're able to understand. Hey, I may have to take it a different way, but I can still do it. Then you may just have to do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with uh, looking within yourself and seeing what exactly your um, what your limitations are. Know what your limitations are, and then plan out around those limitations in order to push yourself forward and that's what you have to do um, a lot of times we just tell ourselves no and then we don't even try right and I'm, I'm, I'm a go-getter I'm I'm a take risk girl that's me uh, and I've always been that way you know I'm the one that would never take a nap because I'm working on something uh, my dad will always have to be like, aren't you tired? Aren't you sleeping yet? No. The moment he sees that I have energy, he's like, okay, let her do her thing. Um, I'm out the way. And I'll do a whole bunch of stuff. And I'll just be going, 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 going. Um, and then when I know I cannot do something, I will chill. I will step back and be like, all right, I need a few hours and lay down. So a lot of people ask me, well, how does that affect work? I, I work for myself. Um, before, when I was younger, I would work for other people, and it would never work out. I, if they give me a schedule, um, or my schedule is a certain way, and I'm sick, 
I still would have to go in. And a lot of times I'm going in to work with a crisis. And one, one day I couldn't stand up for work. And um, my boss had to sit me down. It was just like, maybe this is not for you. You know, maybe um, it, this is too much on your body. You know, even though it was something simple to me, my body was not able to handle it. So I had to really uh, analyze and remap everything out and started really looking into why don't I just do things for me, work for me. And once I started doing that, um, I started different little businesses, started small, different little businesses and, uh, and work my way up, you know, my energy level and how much I can do and, um, and just really, really watching myself and my body and my mind. Um, and that's what I would encourage you guys. So sickle cell is not an obstacle to me. It's my partner for life. That's how I look at it. You know, she has her needs, I have my needs. And I don't look at it as a stumbling block or anything like that. Like, you know, you, we, both, we both work together. And once I understand that we both work together, I have to understand, hey, I need to make sure I'm drinking, I'm doing the things that's going to keep her at bay. If I do not do that, I'm going to put myself in a crisis or a, a longer situation that I have to, right? So I have to look at what am I feeding my body? What am I, you know, giving to my body to drink? Um, am I outside too long? Or am I in an air-conditioned place too long? Is it too cold in here? Like, I really talk, really, really assess myself every single day before... I do things. When I wake up in the morning, I really assess myself how am I feeling. I don't worry about how late it is in the day or, oh my God, I didn't get up at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock this morning. And do uh, uh, that's I'm past all that. I wake up and I assess my body. If I need another hour, I'm going to take it. If I need another two hours, I'm going to take it. Everything else has to... Um, work around me in order for me to give my best and if I don't do that I'm not going to give my best and other people are going to suffer from that too when I'm not my best everything stops and um and that's not a good thing because I don't I don't like the machine to stop so I really really take precautions and also the two I really analyze and assess myself and then go forward and map my day I work longer hours I work a lot more times at night because I have more energy I know when my energy is really high and mine is more at night so I'll do all my work at that time and I may go to bed like three four o'clock in the morning but that's what I'm used to and that's what works for my body and I just go with the flow so if I open my office at 12 o'clock that's when my office is going to open and I don't have any problems with it if my emails come they're gonna to have to wait until I am ready to work and, um, and and you just have to be really you have to really put yourself first in order for everything else to work for you. Um, and, and I hope what I'm saying to you guys is really helpful and, and important to you. You can take something from it. If you have any questions, just leave it below. I will definitely answer. If you want to talk to me directly, just send me an email at najamlee at gmail.com, najamlee at gmail.com. Send me a direct email and we can talk over the phone. I've done that with several other people with sickle cell who've contacted me and we'll talk over the phone and, you know, give advice or whatever is it that they need. I am here for you guys, all right? Um, someone asked me how come I don't look sick. I think it's a mental thing. I put myself together. I always think about when I walk through the door I'm on, when I walk through my front door, I'm on. 
So I'm going to put my best self forward. Um, and I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of juicing. And I really wake up and say today is a great day. Today is an awesome day. And then I move forward. I don't think about my illness. I'm not thinking the first thing about my illness or anything. It's only assessing my body, what I can do today, or what I can do later on in the, in the night. And that's it. Alright, so I hope this helped you guys really well. And I'm always here for you guys. I love you guys so much. And, you know, celebrate and enjoy Sickle Cell Day. Um educate inform yourself it's it's a great day of participating in events if there's an event in your community stop by check it out uh you know if you would like to donate or support in another way uh, there's so many um there's so many organizations that are out there but if you want to talk to me directly that's not a problem uh with my Najumli uh, Unite Sickle Cell and also too I do speaking on sickle cell so if you love for me to come to your school or your event or project that you're working on and um, I'm definitely here to do that and I'll put my information down and also my PR uh, that you can do the booking through and um, yeah I'm definitely I'm all about serving and giving my all and really sharing as much of my experience with other people in order to like really change um, the mindset about sickle cell and also to encourage others that hey you know your life is 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 important and precious that you can do things too do not allow the body to stop you. Do not allow your mind to stop you. Uh, they're very powerful and you can do anything you put your mind to. Um, so if you want to get more tips of what I do and, and different things like that, definitely contact me. I'm here for you guys. Uh, and I love speaking. So that's the thing I love doing. I love speaking and sharing my life with everyone. All right. So have an awesome awesome Monday. Today feels like a Friday. I feel like going into the pool right now. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go work a little bit first. And I hope you guys are doing the SC drink up. I have my coconut water. That's what works for me. Um, I love coconut water. And it has a really great electrolytes. All natural. Um, but also you guys can do Gatorade. Gatorade is really good. They also have at the Whole Foods if you want you know organic electrolytes there's many drinks there that carry a whole ton of natural electrolytes another thing you can do is uh, wheatgrass which is really great for um, the blood and chlorophyll uh, which you can just like put about 18 to 30 drops of chlorophyll into your water and it will really supercharge energize and help with oxygen flow through the red blood cells all right i love you guys a lot and i will see you in another video have an awesome day guys bye